I'm joined today by Guy Hutchinson, who is president and CEO of Ratana. Hello, Guy. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, good afternoon. Pleasure, pleasure to be here and thank you for having me. Now, let's talk about the Future Hospitality Summit that's coming up. Can you tell me what your involvement in FHS is this year? Um, yeah, you know, last year with FHS was just such a phenomenal event, you know, so we're really excited to see the 2022 version. I think there was a lot of pent up desire to sit and meet people, which just drove an, an enormous event last year. But I think a lot of that energy is going to carry over to this year. And and being part of the advisory board, you know, I can see already that anticipation building. And I know talking to investors and partners, I can really see that, that anticipation building. So we're very excited to see this year's event. I think it's going to be bigger and better than even last year. Now, Ratana Group has six brands. It must be a little bit like having children, but can you just give me a little bit of the personality of each of those six brands and maybe um, explain what their USPs are for the investors who will be at FHS? Oh. So that's relatively straightforward, right? So, so yeah, so let's start with the mothership. So, you know, Ratana, Ratana Hotels and Resorts, that's the mothership. That's our, you know, our five-star deluxe well, five and sometimes four star deluxe hotel brand it competes very effectively in that space mm -hmm. we then have a brand called rehan mm -hmm. and rehan is what we describe as a brand of preference so for this region in particular that's that's an important aspect to be able to offer uh, which is a brand which is dedicated to an alcohol free environment so so if you have a preference and for developers and also for guests then you know we have a good option with rehan as a brand Mm -hmm. uh, Arjan, which is our extended stay, you know, a extended stay and bigger uh, spaces. So, particularly with hotel apartments and uh, extended stay and larger living spaces, that works very well in the, in the region from an infrastructure perspective for infrastructure projects. But also, you know, GCC is well known for traveling with larger family groups, and and that yeah. product works extremely well uh, in 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 that in that space and in the extended stay space. Mm -hmm. And then Central, we have Central Hotels and Resorts, and Central is our mid-market uh, lifestyle brand. It hits that great space where, you know, it punches way above its weight in terms of value for money and quality and experience, but is, is, is an affordable option, but with a very strong lifestyle look and feel. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have a brand which is Residences, and Residences uh, is uh, what it says. On the packet, you know, uh, residences are our homes. Yeah. You know, these are per predominantly permanent uh, residential spaces. Uh, but where having a hotel, professional hotel company like Ratana involved, a it helps the investor in terms of positioning that as a premium product, so their return is better. Yeah. And b also for tenants and owners, they get a managed service which which delivers their projects at a five star level. So it's a win-win on both sides. And it works very well in particular in mixed use. Sometimes you have a hotel and a residence connected. Yeah. And then the latest is our newest, I guess the newest child in the family, which is Edge, uh, which we, we launched a new brand, Edge by Ratana, in ATM this year in May. And Edge um, is our collection brand. So, so in by collection brand, uh, it's it's a it's a brand which is designed with sort of flexibility in mind. It's for existing owners, independent hotels, and sometimes properties which don't necessarily fit very cleanly into one brand or another. You might have a property which is 50 villas only or an heritage building, which is difficult to convert to a brand. So Edge is is a is a conversion or a collection brand which enables owners of existing assets to come across and work in a brand environment and take those advantages in a very easy, flexible, and cost-effective way. And with all of those brands, what are you hoping to achieve at FHS? Um, FHS is, is always a very interesting one because we get investors who are interested in multiple segments. You know, so Sometimes we have an owner that has multiple brands, so they can service in one city multiple segments from a hotel to a residence to a long stay to an edge. So we meet investors who are either interested in individual brands or in a collection of brands or to growing a brand portfolio in a particular country, Saudi Arabia. We see, we see a lot of interest, for example, Egypt, we see a lot of interest. Um, so, you know, 
FHS is really about connecting with existing partners, you know, so really rebuilding and strengthening those relationships and meeting new partners who are interacting with us for the first time. So it's a really sort of multifaceted experience, apart from then listening and seeing what happens on stage. And, you know, and, and there's a learning part to it as well. So we're not there just as, a, as pitching as an investment option, but also there is strong takeaways from us in terms of what we learn. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you there and seeing you on stage. Yeah. Um, talking about running the hotels, staff shortages seems to be a massive challenge facing the industry. Is that something that Ratana is struggling with at the moment? Uh, honestly, no. You know, you know, I think that is a that is a reasonably compartmentalized conversation. I think it's it's not necessarily a global issue, but there are there are absolutely some parts of the world where this is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. Very clear. But travel industry globally. You know there are different uh, different impacts and, uh, and there are different scenarios in different places. So I know in Europe and the US, yes, it's clearly a, a, a very serious issue. In mm -hmm. our region, in our part of the world, that's less of a problem. But if you look at recovery from COVID-19 for six to eight months, you know this region led the world globally in terms of performance and recovery, which meant that you know we were impacted for a shorter period by the pandemic and our businesses ramped up maybe faster. So we were by October 2020, October, November 2020, we were already back to our full manning complement. We never honestly let very many people go. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, our downsizing during COVID was less than 2% of our workforce. So yeah. we, kept, we kept a lot of our talent in place. We didn't let talent go on the scale that happened in other markets. And our markets rebounded faster than anywhere else in the world, I think. So we stabilize much more quickly and we've just grown from there. So when you look at uh, from a human resource perspective, we're no better or worse than we were in 2018, 2019. Now, something the Middle East doesn't necessarily have the best reputation in, sustainability. Can you tell me what your targets are for the retirement group and how you intend to achieve them? Um, you know, we talk... Honestly, really frankly, we talk less about targets and we focus more on doing, <laughs> you, know, uh, yeah. you know, because it's not just our part of the world. You know, I think, you know, greenwashing is a bit of a global phenomenon. I and mean, if you go back and you look at the press releases that were issued over the last five to 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, of this target or that target or this activity or that initiative, uh, you know, I'd love to see somebody go back and now measure what physical implementation is at this point in time, because in reality, I know it's relatively limited. You know, our approach is less about publishing targets, it's more about committing to action. You know, so, so when we work through these things, and, and I think the region is perhaps a little bit more advanced than people give it credit for. Mm -hmm. And uh, for sure, because of the way that the region works, is quickly accelerating and give it 18 to 24 months and will be ahead of anywhere else. You know, that's the pace of how this region works and changes. And because yeah. you know, government and infrastructure and the way that people engage around this kind of thing, when it's, when it's decided that it's important, which is what has happened and is happening, yeah. the pace of that change outstrips anywhere else in the world because of the coordination behind the approach. So from our perspective, you know, and we are very advanced in terms of sustainability initiatives. You know, we eliminated very quickly all single-use plastics. So already in 2020, everywhere we, we were legally capable of doing that, we have eliminated all single-use plastics. Mm -hmm. We have every initial food waste initiatives. You know, we have a sustainable produce. So if you come to the UAE, all of our salmon, sea bream, chicken is locally farmed. Yeah. So we're pulling produce from 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 lo locally farmed sources, but you know beyond just your typical aspects in terms of recruitment policy, in terms of labour policy, because sustainability is not just about you know mm -hmm. not washing your towel every day. Yeah. You know it's a three hundred it's a three hundred and sixty degree uh, cultural focus, or and and it's about how you embed these fundamentals and how you operate. So from cooking oil recycling, to water bottling plants, to plastic elimination, food waste elimination, energy management. You know, we've had these initiatives in place for five, eight, 10 years. 
And one thing about sustainability, it is becoming more of a demand of the traveller. And my next question is about how Ratana aims to cater to the next generation of traveller, the, the Gen Zs and the millennials. What's Ratana's long-term plan to, to achieve their business? Well, I, you know, I, I always have kind of a cheeky smile when when I have when I get into that conversation, you know, because I think it, it, it's amazing how two kids in a mortgage sort of flattens out generational change, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, um, and you know, if you look at you know, you can look at hotels that have existed for a hundred years. You know, there's hotels out of there that have existed for more than a hundred years, and have seen, you know. Gen generational change, which is far more drastic than what we're looking at, yeah. and they are relevant today, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, so we have a slightly philosophical take on it, because, you know, when you see, yes, there are always change, there's always change, and there's always subtle change, but mm -hmm. you're always adapting, because equally, when you're developing management, yeah. you know, you're developing management, which is coming from that same space, and are adapting and understanding how to, to deliver a service to guests. But, you know, it, it, it's funny how it equalizes. You know, I think yeah. you know, I, consultants make a lot of money out of, out of, out of pushing generational change and, you know, <laughs> and how this is going to you know, fundamentally change. But if you look actually over the last hundred years, how industry has coped with generational change, yeah. you know, and travel industry and hotels are no different always adapted, always adjusted, always remained relevant because there are fundamentals about the hospitality experience, which are true today. You know, you know restaurants were invented, you know, 500 years ago, right? Because people have a love of socialization and, and, and eating out. Yeah. But that's going to that's gonna continue. There might be subtle differences in the experience, but the fundamental remains the same, you know? So as long as, you know, we always focus on making sure we are great at fundamentals, you know? You know, we are we, we deliver service, we deliver quality, we're committed to it, our people are committed to it. We we stay so focused on on being as good as we possibly can be at delivering fundamentals. And our scale enables us to do that. We talk still about the art of being a hotelier, which sometimes gets forgotten, it becomes more like a brand manager or a real estate management. But there's an art to hotel keeping and and we stay very focused on what's called hospitality, because that's what differentiates us as a brand yeah and we have a strong belief that we stick to those values you know it's like it's like social media when people ask me you know how do you manage social media we go well we start by giving people an amazing experience yeah because if you're responding to an instagram post or, or a tweet that's negative mm -hmm. you know that the horse is already bolted yeah yeah you start by just delivering an absolutely amazing experience and then your great social media is generated from that so it all comes down to those fundamentals. And shifting from the consumer to the travel trade, what does Rotana do to support and incentivize travel agents? Oh, well, now you're asking us to expose the dark secrets of the business. <laughs> the dark arts of the hotel. <laughs> the dark arts of the hotel. <laughs> you know, um, yes, you know, there, there, there are you know, well-known structures for how we do that, you know, and but, you know, it comes down, a lot of it still comes down to trust and relationship management, you know. So if you look at how different hotel companies work with travel trade, you will see a lot of similarity. People have contracts, they'll have rates, they'll have incentives, they'll have you know, marketing budgets, you know, and we deploy a, the same sort of set of tools as everybody else does into this space because there's a traditional structure for how you do that. But there, in this space for us, and, and also for me personally, there's a, there's a key space, which is trust and relationship. So our big travel partners, I meet them three to four times a year myself, because it, we want them to know that we're a brand that they can trust. And if they have a problem with the hotel, they can pick up the phone and they can call me and we will address it. You know, and I think that is, you know, it's the human factor in that relationship that that makes the difference between being the same as everybody else and being able to sort of gain market share. And we focus on that, being that trusted partner, being accessible, being available, 
sort of if partners ever have an issue or they know that we stick to our word or they have a problem, they always know that there is a level in the company they can always reach out to that's going to solve their problems. What will the travel trade have to sell in the future? Yeah, you know, I think I think there's a couple that we are uh, we are, are are really excited about. I think you know there there is a couple of new markets for us. Although we've been there a little while, I think Egypt is is something which is it's a very interesting space. Egypt is an absolutely booming market, and we're really seeing it come back very strongly for international and domestic travelers. And we have two phenomenal properties coming, one on the north coast mm-hmm. of Egypt, or just outside of Alexandria, to where, where, where the Mediterranean, I mean, the sea is absolutely, I mean, it's, it's stunning, it's absolutely beautiful. And we have Luxor, an amazing hotel coming in Luxor that we're very excited about towards the end of the next year. We have a new market opening in Algeria, and those are always fun. So we're opening in Iran and Algeria. So, mm-hmm. you know, attacking something which is new to us is, is, is always a fun exercise. Yeah. Uh, you know, so these are great spaces. And, you know, and, and interesting, you know, this fun space is like Saudi Arabia, the way that Saudi Arabia is changing and growing um, is also very interesting. And for us, it's less about sort of the metro centers, although, you know, Riyadh, Mecca are great markets. Um, it's, and, but it's less about the mega mega projects like Neon. Honestly, I'm less excited about those. It's the it's the, the second and third tier cities that were open. We've got hotels coming in Obama mm-hmm. in the southeast of of yeah. Saudi Arabia, which and you know the the, the ter- it it's beautiful and just not seen. And so putting a hotel there and opening and being one of the first to put a hotel there, you know that this is just a, a fun exercise for us and being part of opening a market like Saudi, uh, opening a market in destinations where international travelers haven't really been to, and in some cases, not all domestic travelers have been to either because the facilities haven't been there. That's a fun journey. You know, so some of the stuff we're seeing in Saudi Arabia is is really, really fun. Well, I am looking forward to seeing all of those. And of course, Connecting Travel will report on everything as and when it happens. So thank you very much, Guy. I will see you at FHS. And hopefully we'll see you on here again soon for another update on Ratana. Have a great day. Bye.